flip that back and yep. flip it over. Yep. All right, so um, helping helping somebody out here. We're doing a clutch install, so I'm going to show him what he's got to do, and I'm going to help him along the way. Uh, what we're doing is we pretty much have a what year? O three or four? O four. O four SRT four. Um, this thing is pretty much stock. It does like has some stuff. We got motor mounts on it the other year, and um, I think it has uh, some Mopar exhaust. But uh, doing a little uh, clutch upgrade. Um, you're at what? Seventy. Seventy-five. Seventy-five thousand miles. So we are we're doing this right. We got the, uh, the street clutch. Um, he's got the upgraded push rod. Um, you know, all the good stuff that we're going to be putting in the transmission. Uh, comes with a little throwout bearing. But anyway, the ACT clutch pit. Yep, box looks huge for some reason. Uh, <laughs> they're not usually in a box that big. But I guess that's just the way modern... I guess that's... Oh, yeah, I guess that's just the way that modern ship the stuff. So, um, we've already got the wheels off. Um, we're going to be uh, getting the air box off. Um, we have to do our normal... Uh, removal here um, we got to get the axles out on both sides we got to drain the transmission fluid um, we're gonna get uh, our axle nuts off um, I'm gonna pull the calibers and lay them up we're gonna unbolt here at our knuckle so that we can pull this out and then get the uh, axle out entirely um, we'll probably end up removing this piece here too just so we have some more room to get in here and uh yeah that's what we're going to do on the passenger side driver's side will be axle nut which are 32s um if you have the factory calibers they're 12s and then it's 21s here for these nuts and bolts pop them out we'll get our axles out i had all this stuff apart when i did the center mount about uh maybe i'll just figure a year ago um it looks like we can delete this because it's got the end off of it Unless he wants to fix it. Uh, this ground wire here. Nothing big. Nothing big. So, um, we decided to do this on a nice rainy day. So, the car's wet. It's wet. You can probably hear some rain. Um, we're going to drain our fluid, which is going to be here. And then, when we get to that point, um, I'll show you some of the stuff that we've got to do next. But, we got to pop this out because we need to get in here and get our transmission mount out. So we're going to get the axle stuff taken apart here first. And work on getting the transmission drained. And then we'll get started on the top. I got him going. He's working on the bottom. Um, I'm going to show you some of the stuff you want to do up here at the top. Um, we got to unplug this over here, the temperature sensor. You want to unplug your solenoids. Um, pull these two screws. There's a bolt here. There's a bolt down there, or a nut, a bolt and a nut to hold this in place. Um, unscrew here, pull it off at the turbo, then we can get our air box assembly out of the way. Um, we got to pull our battery, so that's two tens there on those. Um, Once we get this stuff out of the way, we'll actually be able to see the transmission. See it down there, and uh, then we'll get that stuff unbolted too. All right, look, we can see a transmission now. So now that we're to this point, um, we're going to undo this pipe here. Um, you can do this two ways. One way is you can pull the throttle body and the spacer off so you can get to the bolts for the starter and you have room to pull this back. I prefer to just pull the entire intake. Now, um, it has a couple extra things in there. Let's see here. This one still has the little dog bone bracket down here so that'll be fun to get um but to do the intake i always pull these off and out of the way because we don't want to break those and they always end up getting broke but you're going to unplug all of these you're going to undo this wrap a rag around here because the fuel always comes out i pull the entire line off and i set it off to the side so it doesn't get damaged um they're also kind of costly to get uh pull off our hose and then we're going to undo our two bolts here for this bracket and then this, and then there's a couple tens across here, and we will remove our entire intake. But uh, we're going to start with the pipe. We're going to get this stuff unplugged, and then we're going to get all these other ones unplugged, and then pull the intake, and we'll show you where we're at. 
All right, so we got the intake off. As fun as that was, this is the little dog bone mount that I was talking about. It comes up and bolts on the bottom of the intake. Um, like I said, I pulled my dipstick tube. I've broken. I've seen. I've broken them, and I know that people do because they're they're a hard part to get right now. So we have all that taken off. That's out of the way. We still got to remove this. Um, we got to get down in here. Here's the ground that goes to the battery. Um, we got to undo this wire, this, and then there's three bolts that hold the starter on. We're going to be removing uh, the entire vacuum harness. Basically, I I pull them off because these are starting to get old and brittle and they will get damaged so we're just going to remove that entire harness out of the way and we got to get down in here we've got to pop off our bushings for our shifter cables um there is two bolts that hold the bracket to the trans and then we'll just get that up but we will have room when we get down in there because we're going to be removing this harness and laying it up out of the way along with our throttle cable and all of our boost lines will now be out of the way including the solenoids off the car um i also like to unplug the entire computer and remove that also that way i don't risk damaging any of these plugs here going into the ecm any of the wiring or the ecm itself um, it's just a whole lot nicer because you can pick the pick the plug ends you tuck them out of your way and then you don't have to worry about damaging any of that because that's a costly item and if you do damage that or stretch your wires it can cause you problems down the road so with that being said Let's get the starter off, the starter harness, the vacuum lines, and get down in here and we'll get these uh, shifter cables off out of the way. Shift cables, they're all loose. We're gonna lift them up out of the way then. Um, right now we're on to the next part where we gotta take our lower charge pipe off. So we wanna undo our eight while we're up here. And then we're gonna head down underneath because we're gonna be prying this off, removing our, our computer, which like I said, this is extra stuff. I like to get these out of the way so I know I don't damage them. And then this here will get out the slave. Now, what we're down here, we're going to undo this clamp. Then these right here, these two nuts will come off. And then we can remove the charge pipe. Then there's two stud, I call them stud bolts here. We'll remove them and then that'll come down out. Um, then we're going to work on getting this bracket. So there's three 15s here. There's an 18 right here up underneath, which you can't see right now. There's an 18 there. And then where this bracket comes back, there's an 18 right there. So that'll remove all the lower brackets, including this and everything across the bottom. For this here, we're going to get in here with a screwdriver and pry this off. And then there's a 10, a 10, and a 10. And that'll get our computer out of the way so we don't damage anything there. Um, we still have to pop our axles out yet. Um, and then once this is actually out of the way, what I like to do is I like to get up in there. Uh, these are these are a modular clutch in this. This has the factory modular clutch. It's kind of like a torque converter. There's going to be four bolts on that. We're going to turn our crank and then we're going to break those loose while it's here right now and all supported. So that when we remove this, the trans is going to come off and the clutch is going to stay in the transmission like a torque converter would. Um, it's going to make it easier to come out. It does make it easier to go back in if you're putting a modular clutch in back that way, but we're not. We're sticking the ACT in. So it, the hardest part of this whole job is getting the transmission back up in over the clutch and lined up because you have issues back here where the diff hits the suspension and just it's sometimes it's tough. Last couple I've did, I've got in pretty easy. So we're going to get all that stuff tore apart. I'll show you guys what that stuff looks like and when we get everything else out of the way and what this stock clutch looks like um we're figuring that the fork is going to be pretty shot so we're going to see what's going on there plus we got to get everything cleaned up before we start doing our reassembly we got uh both axles are out well, i just got this one i usually let them lay here so i don't have to pull them the whole way out um you can separate them here if you want to i might pull this one out and separate it and then i'll annie seize it up in there so i know that stuff don't wear um transmission fluid coming out just a little bit which is just because the axle's out all right all the brackets are off we got the ecm out of the way uh the cold side pipes out of the way our hot side pipe from the turbos out of the way now these are the bolts here on the back side get this set up here so we can see what i'm doing not quite there we go maybe all right you're a little lopsided but this is how I like to do these. All right. You get this on here. All right. I set this. 
like this and more this way uh, yeah this is where I want to be okay now we want to go that way all right sorry I had to think here all right oh. basically try to get up in here get this on here put this here pry against this and then I whack this with the hammer and it breaks the lock tight loose and gets it to spin all right um, the reason why I'm doing it this way is an impact would be ideal but we're not pulling the we're not pulling the old pan off to do this guys it's, just, it's not it's just not ideal okay so um, I do this this way and then when you're hitting it you're actually shocking it And this is this is the way you could do this by yourself you could have someone with a big ratchet on the crank holding it um you know that way it would work also Let's scare me. All right. All right, you can see that stuff had plenty of blue Loctite on. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a ratchet on the crank and I'll spin it around and I'll get the other three. All right, we have everything is disconnected. We got the trans mount out of the way, axles, everything is undone. We are down to the two bolts here in the top that hold the transmission to the engine. So um, I have a jack stand supporting the motor over here sometimes i do use a jack but with these solid mounts they pretty much just stay right where they're at anyway they don't drop that much um so i just put that under there for secondary support um and uh yeah we're gonna undo these two bolts and we are going to use this to let this transmission go down and we're going to get the clutch and everything out of here at one shot do 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 there goes the transmission So that right there, that's pretty much everything on a stock car that you have to get out of the way. Now, when you're doing this, you got to watch out for your power steering lines. So we're just going to lower this thing here. here on the speedo uh you want to get down underneath you'll see those lines back there see the power steering lines toward the back yeah, i got it I got oh. underneath yep just catching on there yep and i'm just going to let this thing down slow do not be underneath of it yeah. good yeah i'll push it out of the way it's right here all righty are you sitting it on the ground yes we are just running like two hours ago all right so we have all that off we need to pull these bolts right here out of our flywheel so that we can put our new fancy flywheel on there and then we'll get everything cleaned up we're going to double check our rear mainsail regardless um here is the inside of the clutch look how much looks new no weathering in there do, do, do. I got a little bit there. I got a let down on the uh, chain. Some air, it's still kind of suspended. <sighs> Nothing. So there's that. Now let's pop this off of here. A little bit of wear in there. 
And then a good bit of wear on the fork. Nice lot of clutch stuff. Um, I mean, not terrible. This still should have been okay as far as the way it should have been working um, on the clutch. Um, I don't know. I didn't drive it, so I don't know if there was any kind of disengagement issues. The pivot ball still looks good. Um, you know, everything's just as it as it should be for a 70,000 mile car. Yep, that looks good, dude. Yeah, there was lots of life left in this thing. Well, let's get in a stage three so it wouldn't have much. Once no, it gets, once that gets no, there, this, this, is, this is definitely, um, that clutch is definitely the way you want to go with that uh, street clutch. So right now, um, we're just, we got to get everything cleaned up, get everything prepped. We got to pull that apart, double check our rear main seal, which I believe that's fine. There's no grease, no oil, no nothing anywhere. So all that stuff will be fine. That's usually something you want to take care of when you're doing this. So we're going to pop those bolts off. We're going to get that flywheel off of there. And man, <laughs> everything's good to go. Uh, um, I don't know if you've seen me do it before, but that is all nice and clean down there in the back of that crack. Um, these come with the, the tool for centering and they come with like, it's kind of like a pilot bearing, but that's what you need to help center it. Um, I usually put a little bit of silicone on here to help hold it in the crank. Um, you can just set this in there. They bounce around in there and eventually they just, you know, from hitting the wear and it doesn't hurt anything. It's plastic. It, it breaks up into little pieces. It's not going to damage anything, but this is just something that I do, um, in hopes if, in hopes when you ever have to take it apart again and you still have your tool and, uh, you just have to take stuff apart. Like, let's say your rear main seal leaks and you need to pull your clutch. I mean, not that these kits are that expensive. They're a couple bucks, but, uh, sometimes you got to wait for them to get shipped. But if this thing is still uh, retained and stayed in there and not damaged, all you need is your tool and you can line your clutch back up. So that's kind of why I do this. I just use a little bit of uh, black silicone, any kind of silicone to hold that in. Um, we are now at the point where we're going to be getting ready to unbox the flywheel and we're going to get that on. You know how it is when you're getting motivated with the new stuff. We got everything cleaned up, torqued down, and uh, the clutch is installed. We have... I'm going to find a little light here. Well, anyway, we've got the new AGP fork. Uh, replaced the top on the pivot ball. And everything's in there, all lubed up, ready to go in. Uh, right now is going to be the hardest part. Um, it's not picking it up because we have the hoist. It is getting it to line up so that we can get it bolted together. That is going to be the challenging part. But once we get that thing up in there and we get the transmission mount on, everything goes back together pretty easy. But uh, we will have some prep work. We're going to just throw some of this stuff into the parts washer, just get everything cleaned up. That way it's uh, nice and ready to go. We got a new intake gasket we got to get replaced on the intake. And uh, that's coarse. That's fine. Now, what you should do before you put these in is put a little anti-seize on them because they like to seize up in the computer bracket Where's... there. So I'll grab you some of that. I was going to say, where's the anti-seize? <clears throat> I think I should just film you and see how, how much of this you get all over the place. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. So, um, the trans is in, bolted up, uh, top two bolts are in, that back bolt, this lower bracket's in. Power steering lines are on, slave cylinders in, um, like I said, trans bracket, uh, t -t 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 um, this is in, it just needs tightened up on this side, and then we got the cover to put on and the brakes need to put back together, and we got the charge pipe needs to go back on, intake's cleaned up, cold side pipe's cleaned up, we got some new gaskets, um, we're skipping putting the dog mount back on. So we're just gonna we're gonna put that with our stuff that way we have it when, when the time comes if we we want to put it back on um hmm. yeah so he's getting the ecm done we just cleaned up the bracket it was just something to make it a little bit nicer um so he's bolting the ecm back together uh, and then we're going to get that in we can start plugging in some of this stuff we can get ready to install our yeah the intake and like i said the cables the shift cables are all in 
we have i gotta dig out the funnel um we're gonna dump our fluid back in because we're reusing our fluid i have to put in the driver's side axle over here and then tighten everything up with that so this is coming together pretty good um you know what's what's better to do than doing a rainy friday but uh nice clutch install um we'll install the fuel line once we get the uh wiring down where it needs to be and uh just double check everything go over everything double 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 triple triple check and um yeah we'll soon have this thing fired up and shifting maybe maybe i don't know i mean he did it let's see put it on upside down how did you put it on upside down yeah i did because this, this one's supposed to go on the bottom no <laughs> that one it's only going on one way okay. Thank so you, God. you're all right you can only do it I one way say dude please for the love of god and then when you put that in you gotta kind of gotta go like this and it, it, yep out it's gonna say it's a pain then they, they have to go behind the harness here yeah, like that. Oops. computers in i'm gonna get back to work i gotta get my hands in here here we go check it out everything is together uh this guy's busy buttoning up his airbox i think he's having an argument with it um we gotta plug these in we'll probably have to clear the codes i think he has a code thing so he can clear it um you know like i said we didn't put this back on so we have our our bolt for that and and this we're just keeping out um he's got this we're gonna put this in later everything is together so far here no no problems um we did start it up <clears throat> um here you go you can check this thing out um 74 999 should be turning 75 before before it leaves um 04 it did have you can tell the 04 is when they have the side uh seat airbags they have that um, I'm not sure what shifter he has in here, but like I said, this has a Mopar exhaust on it. Um, car is actually pretty nice. Um, he uh, he takes really good care of it. I'm not a fan of the mud flaps at all, but if you take notice, came from Ohio that way. I know, but if you take notice, there is no stone chips down the side of this car. There is absolutely none. So, as hideous as they looking as they are, they saved the car. Um, but uh, yeah, so he's got the, the little Mopar uh, Borla exhaust with the emblems on it. Um, actually, it still has the uh, nice factory SRT4 emblems. Yeah, you can see, he, that's where I guess where he bought it out in Ohio. Um, you know, normal, normal starting to show its age here uh, on the quarter panel. Uh, just like my other black car. <clears throat> but like I said, really, really clean car. Pretty nice normal stuff um you know this guy even got the seat covers on it so like yeah really oh here i'll grab the, i'll grab us a flashlight and uh Let's take a look i mean we were uh, technically we were looking up underneath when we were working on this thing there you go there um really nice good example of a you know rust free car back thrill i mean very minimal mods like i said it just has the borla the borla mopar kit and i think he has a shifter in it and now we just upgraded a clutch <clears throat> it's a shame you can't see the pinch rails no one jacked on any of the pinch rails so they're really nice uh so that's kind of cool um like i said he has a stage three kit that he's going to be that he collected a couple years ago um the plan is to get it bolted on here pretty soon so maybe we'll get it done this summer we wanted to have it done last year but we just didn't get to it he's busy i'm busy uh just kind of how it works out um but we'll get this thing started up and uh you know pull it out and um see what the clutch feels like uh it looks like the factory oem push rods fine for now um, we're probably gonna end up putting the push rod in later But uh, real nice install. He's got to go through the break-in on the clutch. Just kind of drive it or whatever and You know floor it. Yeah, floor it. No, <laughs> just do some big boost pulls and dump that thing as soon as you hit the road That's what it says not to do in the booklet That's <laughs> this guy. She's super particular. So um, Yeah, 
We'll get this thing started. You guys can see it pulling out. All right, man. Um, yeah, fire that up. Let's see what you think of this clutch. Oh, it already grabs pretty nice. I mean, it grabs like my truck, so it's good that I did, I got the truck. You know what I mean? Because now I'm used to a heavier clutch. I'll cut some of this out, so it's no big deal. Yeah. See how it feels. Stop. Take a picture. Where's it grabbing off the floor? How close? Does it feel like it's grabbing right. higher or lower uh, than the other one? About a, a little lower. But I guess because maybe it's heavier. I don't know. We can always adjust that out too. I, I like oh, you're going to have to clear your codes here. Because yeah. we had them solenoids unplugged when we started it up. Yeah, there's a the EVAP thing. I should have brought that too while we were at it because it's right down Well, there. yeah. Well, yeah. Get, yeah, get everything it. together. You know what I mean? If we're going to be in doing the other stuff, we can always knock out. Right. All right, man. Take your time, drive it. Um, if anything feels weird, turn around and come back. All right, uh, it feels good now. So. I know, I know, but that's what I'm saying. If you if you, if you you need to pedal around a little before you get on the highway, do it. If you, anything feels weird, come back. You have to question anything. Or if you want to come back, double check it. I don't think that there's anything that's gonna need. I was gonna say, we torqued everything yeah. down. I don't everything think there's anything that's gonna need to be you know addressed.